Native volunteers in Malaysia clean up schools and residences in the aftermath of a flood. City volunteers participate in a drill simulating an earthquake in Tainan. Welcome to Die Headlines. I'm Sibir Su. Thank you for joining us. In Johor, Malaysia, it rained heavily in April, leading to floods in low-lying areas. In the aftermath of the flood, city volunteers about the Baha mobilized to help clean up schools and residents' homes. The roads have turned to rivers with mud water. The flood has turned the roads into rivers, and the mud water has flooded in residences and schools. Yongchang Elementary School has been affected, and the school staff has sought out to help. I'm very grateful to Ziji. Whenever it floods, you always come to help us. Today was supposed to be a school day. However, our classrooms have been flooded and there is mud everywhere. So we applied to the Education Bureau to allow the students to stop classes. Then all the teachers returned to help with cleanup work. We appreciate city volunteers. They contacted our chairperson and they are willing to come here to help us with cleanup work. While the school has been flooded with classes canceled, many residents' homes have also been affected. I really appreciate Ziji volunteers for coming to our village to help everyone. There are not many people in the family. Without your help, I would not know when I can complete the cleanup work. Ms. Liu, who suffered a stroke, lives by herself. On the day of the flood, she was shocked. Fortunately, city volunteers came to help out. Mrs. Liu is a stroke patient. Her family cannot go to her house to help out, so we mobilized seven volunteers to go to her home to do cleanup work. Volunteers help clean up the environment and calm the residents' anxious minds. 36 people from Malacca's Hong Kong City Council, city volunteers and residents were mobilized to clean local streets. They also promoted the benefits of recycling to local residents. Rubbish can be seen everywhere on country roads and in water ditches. This abandoned house also has a courtyard full of rubbish. I'm alone and I don't dare to clean it up. It's sad to see the rubbish here. Because I'm only one person, every morning I see this trash. I feel sad, but not today because a lot of people came to help clean. I'm very happy that tonight I can sleep at ease. We more emphasize on recycle, on environment protection. While the volunteers are doing recycling advocacy, Jamuna salvages PET bottles from the ditch and recycles them together with other items collected during the week. Very well. When raining time, a lot of bottles, all, we just take them. Bottles because always I clean the drain. No, so much, so much. I clean the drain. Heavy, no, the things are like big, big log. No, like this, the big, big also inside that. This community cleaning was initiated by the Malacca Hang Tuak City Council. About 30 people, including city volunteers and local residents, participated. The residents here can come together to clean the environment. It's a good weekend activity. We can also educate residents to keep the environment clean from time to time. There are recyclable items which should not be littered. We also encourage the residents to take good care of their living environments. Through our volunteers, the most important thing we want to do is to promote how to sort recyclables and take better care of our environment and keep it clean. Taking care of the earth through practical actions allows the community to become much cleaner after just two hours of work. In Malaysia, ZDK recipient Yuan Hong Kwang was 77 years old and lived by scavenging. He also had to take care of his disabled nephew. He suffered from bowel prolapse. However, due to the pandemic, his surgery was delayed and he eventually passed away. So the volunteers helped him clean up his home and promised to care for his nephew. So the volunteers take out all kinds of cleaning tools from the car. This house, which is full of debris, was the home of 77-year-old Uncle Kwang and his nephew. He, who lived by scavenging, often has neighbors sending him recyclables. Many kind-hearted people give him a lot of recyclables, but he doesn't know how to deal with them. Some of them cannot be recycled. He still keeps them. Today we have collected three trucks of recyclables. The house is full of debris because since last year, 
Michael Kwan suffered a bile prolapse and inflammation. Initially, he could recover by undergoing a surgery. However, due to the pandemic, the surgery was delayed repeatedly, and finally he passed away at the end of March this year. Every time we visit, he sat here. He has toiled his whole life, and now he's gone. Frontiers just learned news of Uncle Kwan's passing when they came to clean his house. Everyone turned their grief into blessings and cleaned the house diligently. It's impossible to get it done by just two people. Today, everyone gathered here to help him clean. He has formed a good affinity with all of us. This is the notice to tell everyone not to send recyclables here again because he has passed away. No one's dealing with these resources here. I hope everyone can understand. Since Uncle Kwan's nephew suffers mental illness, Frontiers will take care of Uncle Kwan's funeral affairs instead. They also promise to care for his nephew in the future. In Northern California, the United States, after the wildfire in 2018, nearly 19,000 buildings were burned down. Many people still find it hard to find a house. After the disaster, city volunteers not only continued to care for the survivors, but also cooperated with other organizations to find feasible reconstruction solutions. I moved back to paradise after the fire. There's a lot of people who need to be home. And I just, that inspired me to look at alternatives to building and what the future of building is. So there's, there's only uh, 10 bolts in the top, so that will actually unbolt from the gantry system. Yeah, 3D printing offers robust materials of concrete and cob, which are earth-based materials that do not burn. If a wildfire situation happens, it's going to have more capacity to stand up to higher heat for a longer duration of time without destructive results. The stage right now is testing and prototype. I'm trying to build the most robust prototype I can to print a quarter scale structure. Every minute that I have, I dedicate towards the development of this project. And I know ultimately that it's gonna help a lot of people get home. That's really the goal, is people need home. Home is the basic thing that we need to feel safe and secure and like we can bring ourselves forward in the world. We are doing it because I lost my home in a fire in 2008 and I know what it is to have need. The Tiny Pine Foundation, we have a platform to help and we just feel like if we can help, then we have to. So the Sushi Foundation uh, already partners with us as far as volunteering to build tiny homes and they funded a tiny home. To partner with some like-minded organizations, we make a bigger impact working together. Homes are very expensive to build right now on the ridge because so many contractors are in demand and there's so few of them. If we have our basic needs met as humans, then we all have the capacity to come together in joy and collaboration and bring a brighter future. In Taiwan, Ming'an No. 7 drill has taken place in Tainan, simulating a massive earthquake that strikes Tainan. City volunteers have participated in the drill, providing tents, hot food, drinking water, jeans, folding beds, blankets, and daily supplies. As the volunteers participated in the drill, they hope in the future, as they face different disasters, they can better cooperate with different organizations. In the drill, a massive earthquake has led to explosion in residences and collapse of buildings. The hard-hit area is Liujia, Hainan. The land and airborne rescue teams have been mobilized. After the warning has been lifted, rescue dogs go inside. After the injured people are discovered, they are separated according to their conditions. <laughs> 
Elementary school students squat down, find refuge, and stabilize themselves, waiting for the aftershocks to stop and then escape. As many residences are on fire, the fire water lines are used to put out the fire. As poisonous chemicals have leaked, the workers quickly remove the chemicals according to different radiation levels. A car has flipped over the slope, and firefighters break into the car to rescue the injured passengers. As the mudslide warning goes off, drones and smartphones are broadcast to the situation. The injured people have been evacuated. The military has been mobilized to evacuate affected residents to shelters. Jinsi folding beds can support us. It is helpful for people who fracture their legs. Using Jinsi folding beds, affected residents won't get wet. They do not have to lie on the ground, which is hard. The injured affected residents do not think about themselves. They are concerned about their families who haven't come out. They feel painful mentally, so we should accompany them. Volunteers have set up religious comfort area and an area to distribute hot food. A bowl of hot soup is the best medicine to calm his mind. In the big disaster, we could calm the anxious minds of the affected residents. The Ming'an No. 7 drill has simulated a massive earthquake that struck Hainan and other large disasters. As the military and rescue workers work together to help the affected residents, city volunteers are their biggest support. Zijin's long-term care station went deep into the community to take care of seniors. At the Puchen retreat, a senior came to the station in a wheelchair, but now he can stand up and dance with others. His example also encouraged other seniors to live happily. The energetic warm-up exercise made the elderly move. Even the 93-year-old Grandpa Jinghai stood up from his wheelchair to join. <laughs> I think he is really beyond our imagination. When we applaud and cheer him, he actually stood up. He makes the leader or the whole team more powerful. The elders need to be encouraged. At the long-term care station, everyone is a treasure. Miss Chen, who suffered a stroke two and a half years ago, can also see her progress. I improved while exercising. I could only raise my hands, but now I can turn around them. The elders hold the pen brushes, reminiscing about their childhood, but also training their muscle and brain power. Although they are old, they have a child inside and feel the beauty of life. Tainan Jin Sihao is 20 years old. Facing each other is Dai Kindergarten. In fact, the original site of the kindergarten was opened and operated by the late landlord. The original plan was to close the kindergarten after donating the land. However, Master Zheng Yan decided to establish the first Dai Kindergarten in this place, focusing on moral education. Facing Tainan Jingsa Hall, Dai Kindergarten can be seen from above with arc-shaped lines, big arches and concentric circles. The arts in the courtyard, in fact, is our hope that our children can learn the interaction between people and be kind and inclusive. The little bodhisattva in the kindergarten tells the story of Grandpa Zhuang. The original site of the Tainan Dai Kindergarten was also a kindergarten before the land was donated. We are not good at this education and I don't know how to do it. I said to Zhuang, I don't know how to do it, but when the boat goes under the bridge, it straightens out. We don't want to make money, and if we want to do it, it will come naturally. Also, senior Aunt Chiu Xiang doesn't read. She really hasn't read a book, but she knows a lot of things. Zhuang Xianzi and his wife have been operating a kindergarten for eight years, taking care of disadvantaged children and being a vegetarian on campus, which coincides with Zhiji's philosophy. Master Zhen Yan asked what is your kindergarten plan to do, and he said I want to end it. The master said that I think you manage it very carefully and I want to keep it. Zhuang was very grateful to the master. Grandpa Zhuang also came to the first graduation ceremony of Dai Kindergarten. 
to run his kindergarten with the best quality in Taiwan, who can say that quality is not important. Continuing the educational spirit of Grandpa Zhuang, First Dai Kindergarten in Taiwan was established. The preschool Jinsa aphorism education was also compiled by the teachers themselves. In the early days, a lot of teaching materials were bought in the market, and many kindergartens were like this. But Master is very wise and said that we should be teaching Jinsa aphorisms. This environment teaches the children, and as soon as you walk in that environment, the child's heart will be settled. The teaching of Jingsa aphorisms is part of daily life, and the Dai farm behind the school building is also a natural classroom. Among the five Dai kindergartens in Taiwan, the only kindergarten with a 90 square meter large farm Grandpa and grandmas are all teachers. There's fruit and then ripe fruit, then go to taste fruit is a joy. The education of food farmers can be passed down to children. Harvested vegetables from the garden are often added to kindergarten lunches. It's not easy to win over young children who are picky eaters. Lin Suzhen, a 20-year kitchen worker, always has a way to make vegetarian food more delicious. I think of a way to add some vegan BBQ sauce to make the food have a better texture so they can eat it. We want this change to be brought back from the child to the family. They discover as it turns out a vegetarian food is no worse than me. Humanistic education subtly plants the seeds of goodness in the hearts of children so that they can also influence others and lead a virtuous life. This year, the Selangor state government provided land in a park to establish a vegetable garden to help inspire local residents to start vegetable gardens in their own homes. The first one was installed and maintained by Subhanjaya City. The Kebun by Amboy Park's hydroponic garden is the first of its kind in Selangor, located inside a park. It is now open to the public for all to come and experience. The vertical indoor garden grows eight varieties categorized by the leafy vegetable kind or fruit. Suban Jaya City Council member's assistant, Ku Chi Boon, is one of the people involved in this project, and he will visit the garden's water reserve each day to check and adjust the water supply. I check for three things, the water temperature, the water's pH level, and the nutrition level. This one's for cherry and tomatoes. The other two on the side are for the gardens in the front and at the back. They're for leafy greens, so the nutritional needs are not the same. Sometimes we'll look at the leaf and see what it says to us. It will tell us if it's growing well or if it is lacking in nutrients, like this one where it's yellowing, it indicates a lack of micro-minerals. Hydroponic is a gardening system without using the traditional dirt fertilizer. Instead, it uses a nutrient-rich water solution for the plant to absorb and grow. Our fluid comes in from this tube, the white one. We do this because we don't have dirt. We use an ebb and flow method where we flood the root system and then allow it to drain. This replaces the dirt drying and moistening situation. The community garden has been established by the city government, covering the finances for land and operations with private companies. 
providing the know-how and management support. Some vegetables need five weeks for harvesting, others longer, while some as little as three weeks. It all depends on the type of vegetables. For example, Chinese cabbage, it needs about three to four more weeks longer. There are six plants per circle, and from top to bottom there are 15 layers. It's not too high, otherwise we can't reach it. As Malaysia is near the equator, the climate is humid and hot, which proves to be a challenge for greenhouse gardening. When the sun hits, the temperature gets higher, and that is not so good for the vegetables. So one of the most economical solutions is that we've installed ventilation for better airflow. In the beginning, the tomatoes would grow on top, which was harder for us to pick. So we're going to change to a spiral system for this one. This garden not only added to the greenery of the city, but also has inspired many of the residents to try hydroponics gardening at home. Actually, our main purpose isn't just to show them something new, but to inspire the residents to get interested in this and take this model home so they can too plant their own veggies at home to eat. It tastes crispier, healthier, and it's environmentally friendly. If I went with the traditional dirt method, I would need a lot of space, which is not suited for me. But here I have a three by six feet area, and it's done. The improvement in farming techniques makes having a vegetable garden at home no longer a difficult thing to accomplish. One not only has healthy choices, but also safe choices for food. To challenge the kids of the Kuala Lumpur City International School to adopt a vegetarian diet, the teacher shared a story about a crocodile who loves to eat vegetables. Let's see how the kids responded. Kuala Lumpur Ziji International School's kindergarten department is using interesting stories to teach the kids about the benefits of vegetarianism. Through a card game, teachers have invited students and their family to try vegetarian food. Some even tried hands on cooking. We have designed it as a children's and letters game. When the children fill up the card from 1 to 100, then this card has another use. It becomes a game, and they can use it to play games with their parents at home. This is a more program that you want to eat. It's my favorite skewer. You want to make yours? Who wants to make your own skewer? Okay. Through fun games and entertaining ways of teaching, the teachers encourage the students to eat more vegetables starting from a young age. In Taiwan, a group of visually impaired students accompanied by their helpers joined the Dajia Mazu procession. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.